Okay, this is the 6.5 notes from 6465. This is the rest of them. We're going to do a, what's called a rate in, rate out problem. And these are really big because there's going to be a free response question on the AP test about this because there is every year. So rate in and rate out problems are where something's coming in and something's leaving. Like it could be water into, a, water could be coming into a barrel and then the barrel might have a leak. That's a water out. Uh, we're going to do two examples that are, and they are going to be free. Re there's going to be a free response question worth nine points, which is a lot on the AP test. So you want to get your calculators out because we're going to practice how to use your calculators on doing integrals. This will be an integral problem. And you're going to want to finish the 645 worksheet. Monday, people have a quiz on 62. And Tuesday, Wednesday will be 63B quiz. So we're going to look at this problem right here. And it says, after the AP Calc exam, students post means at a rate of this. So this is kids putting stuff on the on the com on the computer on the internet, and they're starting this zero hours after the test for the first whole day. They start putting means on there, which will get you in trouble because you're not allowed to share anything about the test. Uh, or M is students per hour. Now this is kind of a big deal because this is a derivative because that's a rate. Students per hour is a rate. And then T is in hours. Uh, so in other words, this is students, the Y value is students per hour, and the X value is hours. Actually, it's T and M. This is M and T. Okay, and then after 12 hours, college board begins canceling your, the scores of the students post in. in other words, they lose their scores. They don't get it, they don't get a count. They kick them out. And this is the rate they cancel them, and they don't start canceling them until 12 hours after the exam's over. So we're doing the 12 hours to the end of the first day. So this is the N. This is the kids putting stuff in. This is the positive amount of kids putting stuff on. And then this, this thing right here is the out because they're canceling them. They're getting rid of them. They're taking them out. So this is the negative part, the minus. Now it says, let S of T be the number of students who have posted means but not yet been their scores canceled. So you might think S of T is going to equal M of T minus C of T. And you, you'd almost be right, but the problem is M of T is students per hour over T hours. And this is just straight up students. So what do you do with hours and students per hour to get that to just be students? Well, we got to multiply these together, and hopefully we know from doing our area formulas, base times height is what we're doing. So this is an integral. So this would be the integral of 0 to some time t. And over here, this would be the integral from 12, because this canceling doesn't start till 12 to some time t. Okay, now t, the whole time would be 24, but we're, we're not really sure what time we're going to. This part doesn't even start till 12 hours. So any value that's below 12, you're only worried about M of T. Okay, so uh, this is an integral problem for part of this anyway. So after 24 hours, how many students have posted means? So we want to know how many students have posted means after 24 hours. Now this doesn't say how many kids got canceled, does it? It just wants basically saying how many still students. So we don't want students per hour, so that's why we're doing an integral. After 24 hours, so 0 to 24, and we're going to do that of M of T. We're not worried about anybody who has lost any of their, uh, can't, or had their scores canceled. So I'm going to bring the calculator over here and show you what to do on your calculator. So I've already typed in, I have already typed in the equations to these two problems we're doing to save us some time here. So there they are. And I've turned off the last two because they're for the next problem, but I got these two on. I'm going to go ahead and graph these because there's a common problem with these kind of problems. And if I graph this, there's, there's where our graph is usually located with something like this. So this is going to graph both of those. And, and when you graph uh, complicated graphs, sometimes you don't get a it takes it a while to graph it, and I probably should have shut off the other one. This is the red one coming in there. The blue one was in the first one. That's the M of T, the inter, or just straight up M of T, and that's the uh, uh, the other one. I can't remember the what C of T, the canceling. Okay, so there's the graph. Now, if you notice, you can't see very much there, right? 
So what you want to figure out is what do I want my window to be? Well, if you remember over there to the left of my deal over there, it said we're going from zero to 24. So, and I'm using X's, not T's. So I'm going to put zero for my minimum. My maximum time is 24. And then I don't really want to go, we're not going to go negative people, but I'm going to put negative one so I can see the X axis. And I'm going to go up, I'm going to guess maybe 100 students. I don't know for sure if that's big enough or not, but I'm going to graph it and see what happens. So there's a better look. And see, that's already going off my graph. I can shut my graph off by hitting second off. I'm going to make my window bigger, and I'm going to try 500 and see if that works better for Y. So here's 500. Now, see, that looks like that's not going to be as high as I'd like it, but we're going to go ahead and go with that. Looks like maybe about 300 would be better. So you might want to change your Y to 300, but I'm, I want to get this video off as short as possible. And because that is so low, I, well, I think maybe we can do that. You know what? I am going to change my window because I want to see what's happening over here at the origin better. So I'm going to go window, and I'm going to go from negative 1 to 24. And I'm going to go to 300 here because I think that will make it look a little better on my calculator. So again, we got to wait for this thing to graph so that I think this might be the best window we can have. And I might even, you might even want to go to 25 because that might be the important part that we need. So I like the way this looks a lot better than the other one. All right, so there's my function right there. Okay, now I want you to realize that 12 is in here somewhere. So the actual graph, this red part over here, isn't even really there because it doesn't start till I get to 12, which is right in here in the middle. So this red part is not part of our problem. So you need to make note of that. All right, so there's my graph. And I'm going to hit second quit, and now I'm going to show you where integrals are. So you hit math. 9, and we're going to go from 0 to 24, and I put that M in Y1, so I'm going to arrow over to that blank, and I'm going to hit VARS, which is right under the circle thing, VARS, arrow to the right, Y VARS, number 1, and y one's the one I want, so I'm going to hit Enter, and then this I put it in terms of X, so I hit DX, and there's my answer. Now, normally we would round that to 3,529.420, but because uh, the graph, the problem said, oh, I hope that thing's still there. Because the problem said to the nearest whole number, we're going to say that that would be about 3,529 point, oh, no, we're just going to round to the nearest whole, students. So that's how many total students approximately, again, it's an approximation, because it wasn't exactly that number, students that posted means from zero to 24 hours. Part two says that 29, at our time t equals 19 hours, is s of t getting larger or smaller? Okay, well, larger or smaller means increasing, decreasing. To me, increasing and decreasing means we want the first derivative. Well, we know that s of t is equal to these integrals, these same things I have up there. I'm not going to write the whole thing down again, but it equal this thing. So that means we want increasing, decreasing, means we want S prime of T. Well, S prime of T is a derivative. So in other words, this is going to be just the original function that I'm dealing with right here. And we want this when T is 19. So we're going to stick a 19 in here. We're going to stick a 19 in here, and we're going to stick a 19 in here. And then that is what I'm going to find on my calculator. So now I want to go back to my graph. So I want to do M of 19. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second, calc, 1. I want the value. Now, this, I'm going to hit 19 here. And this is, and I enter that. Now, do you see this is blue? So that right there, that 140.62389, that right there is going to be my, my uh, blue function, which is Y1. It tells you up there which function you have. Okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to hit second quit, and I'm going to come over here and hit alpha 
y, which is 1, and hit enter, and there's that same number as the decimal. I want it in my calculator somewhere else. Sometimes you might want to say alpha 1, and then hit store, which is right to the left of 1, and maybe you'll store that in alpha a, which is alpha math, and hit enter, and now that is in my a value. I put that in the a value in the calculator, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go back to my graph, and I'm going to hit second calc 1 again, and I'm going to hit 19 again. And now that's, again, that's the same answer I have, but I don't want it in this one. I want it in the red one. So I'm going to arrow up or down, and you see it jump to the red one. So since it jumped to the red one, I'm going to hit uh, enter because that's what I want. And now that's in Y. So I'm going to hit second quit. And now I can either hit Y minus A because now Y is no longer 140. I'm going to show you, I guess, alpha 1. I'm going to hit enter. There's the new Y value, okay? Or I could hit alpha 1, and I could store that, hit store, and I'm going to hit alpha program to put that in B. So I want A, so I hit alpha math minus alpha apps. That's N19 minus the other one, and there's my answer, negative 19 something. Now, you could, you could write down those decimal numbers I had. Where's my pen? So I could, I could go ahead and write down it. I got this in the wrong thing. Okay, so I could come down here and say this is squiggly equal signs. I could type in those two numbers, 160 point, uh, oops, sorry, it's 140 was the end one, 140.62389. Uh, I shouldn't be rounding yet because I am, I am, uh, I have, I haven't got to my answer here, minus 160 point, and that number was 0487 dot, dot, dot. But you don't even have to write this part in because you're telling the person, and you do need the 19 in here and the 19s and the 19s. You could go right to the answer because you're telling the grader that you're doing that with these things up here. So this answer is negative, rounds to negative 19.425. Okay. So we want to know is this is the function s of t getting larger or smaller? And the answer is s of t is getting smaller at t equals 19 because s prime of t is less than zero because it's a negative at t equals 19. So that's how you would write that answer. Okay, let's go on to part c. At what time is this number of students at the, having to post means at what time does the number of students that are posted mean have not yet had their scores canceled or maximum? Okay, so we are taking into consideration the whole time 0 to 28, but we want a maximum. We want to get a maximum on this value. So maximum should tell you we are going to be dealing with derivatives again. So I'm going to go back to my graph and I want to, what I'm basically looking for is, I want to find where S prime of T is zero, right? So if I want to find where S prime of T is zero, I want to find where M of T minus S of T is zero. And I want to find the absolute max of this. Well, I have, if you recall, we have 0 to 24 for my t values, right? So we're going to make a little t chart because we want to find where it's the max and the min. So we got 0 and we got 24, and now we got to find where this is true. Well, something we must take into consideration again is s, the, uh, I said s of t in my bad. This should have been c of t. s of t is what this, e, uh, this equals s prime of t. So I want to find where this is zero or where these are going to be equal. But remember, this doesn't even start till after 24. So I'm going to go back on my calculator. So hopefully this doesn't go away. Good, it's still there. I'm going to look at my graph. And remember, this stuff is not there. So 
it's not there till 12. So what I want to do is I want to find when just m of t is zero, which it looks like it's zero right in here somewhere. So I'm going to hit second calc two, and I'm going to bring my cursor way. I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can see it. I'm going to bring it way back over here, and I'm going to go until it gets to a negative value. Now, if this negative, if it goes negative, if my zero is left of x equals zero, then I don't have to worry about it. Do you see right here? I've got a negative now, so I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to come where I get positive. So now it's positive here. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to hit enter again. Now, if this, okay, so it says it's zero, zero. So we already got zero, zero as a critical number, okay? Now, <clears throat> so if, you, if you went ahead and found this intersection point right here, you could use that as a critical number, but it doesn't really count because the red graph does not start counting until 12. So if you put in this intersection here, uh, you're going to end up being okay because it is not the max, but this red graph isn't even supposed to start till 12. So what I'm going to do now is find out what this intersecting point is because if I take m of t minus c of t to be zero, that's going to be their intersection. So I'm going to hit second calc five. And let me just show you here. There is an answer here. Their intersection is right there at point zero when x is point zero nine nine two three seven. So if you put that down as a critic point, you shouldn't because the red graph doesn't really start there. So you shouldn't even use that one, but it, it won't hurt you on this problem. And I think Mr. Record put it on his key, so that's why I'm telling you that. He had it on there, but you don't need it at all. So I'm going to take my cursor way back over here closer to the intersection of this other one because I do need this one. But this is after 12 hours. See how x is greater than 12? So wherever this red is 12 is where it starts. So I hit enter, enter, enter. And so my critical number is right there, that 18 point whatever. So let me put that up here as well. So I'm going to put 18 point. Now you are not going to use the rounded answer here. Seven, 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 dot, dot, dot. You are not changing that answer. And then there's no other place it intersects. So 24 is my other value. Okay. So we got to plug those values in for this thing or into the, uh, uh, the uh, problem to find out what those values are. So we are we're going to do x and s of t. So s of t is the integral part. So to make this really quick, this one's pretty easy. At time zero, there's nobody in there because, um, let me go back up here real quick. If you go zero to zero, this one doesn't even count yet. So at s of zero, you're going to go zero to zero, which means your base of your rectangle is zero. So that's why this is zero. Whenever your bottom number and your top number match up, you get zero out of there. You could type that in your calculator if you wish. So that's nothing. And then this, these two, I've got to plug it into the, uh, where's that? I got it, it's up there too. I got to plug those into this thing. So I'm going to do those on my calculator again. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do so that I have that 70, that number on my calculator. So. If you look, that x value is the one I got to use, that 18.77 blah, blah, blah thing. So I'm going to hit second quit, and I'm going to hit uh, alpha C, I guess. And I'm going to store that x value. So I'm going to hit store, and I'm going to hit alpha X. Actually, I just hit the X button right there. Oops, I hit it backwards. I got to clear this off. Oh, no, I hope it's still there. I'm going to see if it is. So I'm going to hit X store, and I want to store that, and I'm going to store that in C. I almost put it in back. Oops. Store that in C, alpha C. Yep, still the same decimal number, so there's my C. That's what I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit math 9, and I'm going to go 0 to C, so I hit alpha program, and then that's the Y1, so I'm going to hit bars, y bars, 1, 1, out of x, and I'm going to go minus, and I'm going to hit math 9, and I'm going to go 12, because remember that doesn't, next one doesn't start till 12, but I'm going to go to c, 
And then that's gonna be y2. So I'm gonna hit vars, arrow to the right, hit one, and then hit two and do dx. And I'm gonna hit enter. And it calculates that number, it's too bad. So then I would come over here and I'm gonna type that, that number in here, 2,774.475. I'm gonna go ahead and round that one. And now I got one more, I got 24 hours, the other, the other end point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to hit, oops, let me get my calculator screen back up there. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to hit second, enter. So the other possibility is when C is 24. So I'm going to type 24 in for that C. I'm going to come over here and type 24 in for that C and hit enter. And this is my number at the end of the day. Wow. That was a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Looks like they've almost got everybody, uh, everybody is pretty much failing, huh? Or already kicked out. So it is 0.163. So let's write that in there. 0.163 students left, okay? So what's the maximum number of students? So we would say the max students hosting means without, let me put it this, without getting canceled is about, now I would go ahead and write the decimal. Since it's people, you don't have to, you can write 2774 students but if you write this, they don't count it wrong. But since it's students, you usually don't use decimals for real living things. Students at T equals 18.772. Um, and we're talking hours after 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. Uh, after 8 a.m. Because if you looked up there, I forgot to make a point of that. But I would, uh, I think it said it started at eight. Let's go back and look real quick. So I don't remember for sure. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't even tell when it started. Maybe this is the next problem. So we wouldn't even have that part. We just say at 18.772 hours. You know what? I read that wrong. It's 778. I just looked at my calculator. Yeah, I've done that so many times right here. It should have been a 78. I don't know where that two came from. So it should be at 18.778 hours. Okay. All right. So that's that problem. This stuff's kind of hard and it takes some time. All right. We got another problem coming up here. And this is another in out problem. This is the last one we're doing. Sorry, this is taking so long, but I want to make sure you know how to do your calculator. So now we got to talk about the zoo, lions, tigers, and bears. So the rate which people are entering the Indianapolis Zoo on a given model is E. So E is, stands for enter. So you need to know that this E is the positive part. This is the N or positive part we're entering. And the rate at which the people leave the zoo the same day is modeled by this thing. So this is the out people walking out of the zoo, which this is the negative part. That's the minus part. So it's both E and T are measured in people per hour. So again, this is this thing is a rate again because it says people per hour. So this is a rate. This is already a derivative, in other words. So again, if I'm thinking about my graph, we got people per hour. And then time is in hours again. So this is hours. Now this one, oh, that's where I got the eight from the last time. It is this. We're starting, the zoo's opening at eight, in other words. Okay, so these val these are valid from zero to 12. Now this one's different then than the other one. This one's different because both work from zero to 12. In other words, you walk out and walk right, walk in and walk right back out. The other one, didn't, the second one didn't start till 12. These both are good the whole time. So it says at time t equals zero, there's no people in the zoo. So how many people have entered the zoo, zoo by 12? Well, if we started at 8 to 12, that means we got T is 4. Now, this is this asking anything about how many people 
have left the zoo? And the answer is no, but once again, we're only wanting people here, not people per hour. So what we want here is we want the integral of this thing. So we are looking for the number of people in the zoo, which is going to be the integral from zero to four of that E of T dt. Now again, it's faster to write this. You could write this whole thing down, but by writing just the function, it's way faster. And now we're going to go to our calculator. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I want to show you, I'm going to turn this graph off and I'm going to turn this graph off. I'm going to turn these two on. So I'm turning those two on because these are the two functions. That's the E, that's the L. So we got Y3 and Y4 now. Oops, I don't have my, let me show you this on my screen. Sorry. So I turn these two off by clicking on the equal sign. I turn those two on by clicking on it. But Y3 is my entering, Y4 is my exiting. So I'm going to type in now math 9 again, that's integral, and we are going 0 to 4. We want to know how many people are entering, and that's y3, so I'm going to hit bars. y bars 1, and I want the third one, so I hit 3, and this is a function that I typed in as x, and I hit enter, and there's my answer. So I've got approximately 203.068 people. That's about the approximate number of people that entered the zoo during the, from time t equals zero to t equals four. Okay, the second question says, 20% of those people who leave the zoo are selected at random to re receive a special discount ticket for a return turn trip. How many people have received a, received a discount ticket by 5 p.m.? And then it tells you this is at nine. Well, 20%. So we need to either write 20 over 100 or 0.2. And then we're going to do the integral from 0 to 9. Okay. And all we want to know is how many people would have, would have gotten this by now. So if this is of all the people entering, we don't care if you left or not. We want to know what's 20% of all the people entering. So we are going to, we're going to come back in here and I'm going to hit Oops, let me get the screen back up so I can show you a faster way to do this without having to type all that stuff back in there we just had because we're almost what we got, except now we're going to have 0.2, and now we're going to, I'm going to arrow up here and hit enter, and then I got to go back and change my 4 to a 9, and that makes it faster to get this answer. So the number of people receiving a free free ticket. Okay, why is mine different? Let me do this again. 0.2 times math 9. Let me type this in again. 0 to 9 of y3 bars, y bars, 1, 3, x, enter. So it should be 134 people. 134.992 people. Okay, so. That's not the same answer Mr. Record got, and I'm not sure why. Oh, okay, let me go back up here and look at this. 20% of those people who leave the zoo are selected. At, oh, who leave the zoo. 20% of the people who leave the zoo are selected at random to uh, receive a special discount. I, okay, so I put the wrong equation in. We want leaving the zoo. I didn't see the word leave. So let's go back and go back to my screen. So now I want to, I'm going to hit second enter because everything's right except I want Y4 in there. So I'm going to hit bars, Y bars, one, and now I want four. There we go. That's the same answer he got. So he put E of T in his, but that's not right. It should have been L of T because it said the people leaving the zoo. 
because I did not see that. Look at it, it looks like a lean is the L function. We got we got one, no, two more parts to do here, and then we'll be done. So it says let n of t be zero to t of e. Okay, so he's done what we had before. So we got n of t is going to equal from zero, oops, from zero to t of the people entering. Looks like we get t minus the people leaving. And you could write this as two integrals. You can put one integral here, e t dt, minus the integrals of uh, zero to t of l t, and you'd be fine. Or you can write it as one thing. So I'm going to just I'm going to just do the one thing. And remember, this is my y three. This is my y four on my calculator. So this is what we are looking for. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I'm going to hit math nine. Math 9, and I'm going to go uh, 0 to 10. Okay, now, all right, we'll just do it that way. So I'm going to hit uh, Y3, bars, Y bars, 1, 3, minus bars, Y bars, 1, 4, DX. And there's going to be the number of people leaving when it calculates it. Take another while. There it is. All right, so we would say this is, so over here I would say n of 10 is equal to the integral from 0 to 10, uh, e of 10 minus l of 10, b t. Okay, and then when that answer I got was 273.635. Now we are supposed to explain, explain the meaning of that. Explain the meaning of that. Okay, well, oh, wait a minute. That says n prime. I didn't see the n prime until I looked at the paper here. So we did that. It says explain the meaning of n of 10. So let's explain the meaning of n of 10. I didn't can't see it on my screen very well because the light's so bad. Explain the meaning of n of 10, and then we're going to do n prime of 10. So n of 10 means at t equals 10 hours, or you could say 8 and 10 hours from 8 would give me 6 p.m. if you wanted, or you could say at, at 6 p.m. Either one of these things would be fine, or at t equals 10 hours. Uh, there are a total number of the total number of visitors in the zoo, or the total number of people at the zoo right now, total number of people in the zoo right now is about, and then we would write that number down, uh, the 273.635 people at and I guess we've already got to add t equals 10 hours or at, at 6 p.m. Okay, so that would be the, what that is. Okay, now we're going to keep going because we got to do n prime of t. Well, n prime of t, n prime of 10, sorry, n prime of 10 is just straight up e of 10 minus l of 10. Okay, so that's what we want to look at then. Now, remember, E of T is people per hour uh, for number of hours, all right? So we're going to tell right now what this means, but we're going to type it into our calculator first. So let's, let's go to our calculator, and I'm going to go over here to the graphic, or over to the function again, and I'm going to graph this thing. Let's see, I can't remember what it was, 0 to 12, I think, right? So I'm going to change my window up front from 0 from uh, negative 1 to 12. And let's see, there's 273 people at 10, so I'm going to go up. I'm going to leave that 300 and see what happens on my graph. So there's the people coming into the zoo. Oops, let me put my screen up, sorry. There's, and here's the people leaving the zoo. Okay. 
you'll see that letter in red doesn't show up very well on there either. So if you look right here, it's, I guess it's pink. Right there where those cross, that would be where the same, the number of people in the zoo are equal to the number of people that have left the zoo. Okay, so these are people coming in, these are people leaving. And I want to find the value. Remember, we're looking for E of 10 first. So that's the black one. So I'm going to hit second, calc, one. And I'm going to type in 10. I'm going to hit enter. And that value right there for Y is it. So I'm going to hit second, quit. And I'm going to say, take Y, alpha, one. And I'm going to store that value in A, alpha, A. That old A I had is no longer there now. And I'm going to go back to my graph, and I'm going to hit second calc, and I'm going to do value again. I'm going to do 10 again, and I hit enter. And now I don't want the black one anymore. I want the pink one. So I arrow down or up. I hit enter. So right there's the Y value at, at uh, 10 for the people leaving. So I'm going to hit second quit. And I'm going to hit take that Y value because it's now that Y value I just had there. And I'm going to store that into B, alpha apps. There's that value. So then I'm going to take on my calculator, alpha A minus alpha B. And there's the value. That's the, the, the derivative. So this derivative is negative 6.2. To eight. Okay, so remember this is people per people per hour uh, entering, people per hour leaving. So we want to know is this uh, what this means? So this is a derivative of people there. So this what this means is the number of people at the zoo. Uh, I'm going to do pound sign for now. The number of people at the zoo. is decreasing the, by approximately oops I, I put I put the word decreasing it probably been better to put is changing at a rate changing at a rate that way I can't do a double negative and screw it up at a rate of approximately negative 6.228 people per hour. Remember, that's what E of T and L of T are in, people per hour. At T equals 10 hours. Or you could say at 6 p.m. Okay, pretty tough stuff. We got one more problem right here to do. This is the last one, and I know this video is kind of long, and I apologize, but I really want you guys to uh, know how to use your calculators because you're going to need them. Okay, so this says, at what time from 0 to 12 does the model predict the number of people at the zoo will be a maximum? All right, so this is a maximum. We want a maximum amount of people. Now, this is just people, not people per hour, so we're back to n. So we're looking for when it's n of t, what value of n of t is going to be where um, the integral from 0 to t of the people entering minus the people leaving, when is this thing going to be at a max? When will that be a max? So. In other words, we want to take our original two graphs because we want to we want to find when n prime of t equals zero, which means we want to know when does e of t minus l of t equals zero because that's going to be our critical numbers. Okay, these are our critical numbers, so I got to find my critical numbers. So in other words, if I add that over there, I want to know when these two are going to be equal. All right, and I want to make a t chart. I need my t-chart because, remember, we always want to take into consideration, and that should be a t there, we always want to take into consideration uh, the beginning and the ending, and then anywhere in between where those critical numbers occur. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, I'm going to look at my graph, 
and I'm looking for intersecting points. Well, I see there's an intersecting point here, but that looks like a zero, that's zero. So it looks like to me, the only point that I need, now maybe I better go back here and make sure. So I'm gonna to try to do an intersection right here and see what happens, okay? So let's see what we get here. So we need second calc five. Okay, since I'm up here real close, already blinking, I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this closest one here. So I'm gonna hit enter, enter, enter. And at that time right there, okay? So I'm going to, uh, well, let's go ahead and get all that value in there. Okay, so this is a point. I can't see, I gotta get my glasses on. One, three, four, two, six, five, seven, eight point one, three, two, four, dot, 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 good enough. We're not rounding this. So now I'm gonna plug that in right here and find my Y value while I got that on my calculator. So I'm gonna go back to my calculator. Well, that value right there is in my X right now, right? That value's in my X. So you could write the whole thing down if you want, but I'm going to hit second quit and I'm gonna hit math nine. And I'm going zero to that X value we just had. So I'm gonna hit, uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and store that. So I'm gonna take X. So X is alpha, oops, no alpha, just right by alpha is X. And I'm gonna store that and I'm gonna put that back in A. So um, there's that, that time. So I'm gonna hit math nine. I'm going zero to A, alpha A. And now we are trying to get the total number of people in there. So that's Y3 VARS, Y VARS, one, three, minus, that's the people coming in, Y4 VARS, Y VARS, one, four, and it's with respect to X. So we're waiting on my calculator to give me an answer here. There it is, 281.117. 281.117. By the way, you put zero in up here, zero to zero again, this one's zero. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my screen here and I'm gonna find this last one first because it'll be faster if I hit, if I go second, enter, it gives me the same thing, but I'm gonna go back here in place of A and put in 12 because that's when we close, the zoo's closing. So this is probably going to be less So there's 260 people when the zoo is supposed to be closing at whatever time, 260.905. So actually closer to 261 people. And now if you remember, I couldn't tell for sure if there was an, oops, let me get the picture back up here. I couldn't tell for sure if there's an intersection here or not. So I'm gonna try it out and see what happens. So I'm gonna hit second calc five. Now I gotta take my cursor way back over closer to this intersection point because it looks like there might be one there and I can't tell if it's zero, zero or not, but we're gonna see what happens. Enter, enter, enter. Oh, it is, it is not zero, zero. So I'm glad I checked it. So I'm going to hit, that's at time point zero, zero, eight, three, one, zero, zero, eight, three, one, dot, dot, dot. And I'm gonna find that number right there by going back to my same problem I just had. So I'm gonna hit, uh, Second quit, and we hit enter again, but now I want that point zero zero number back in there. Why did it do that? Okay, come back up here. And I'm hoping that that is still in the X value. We'll see if it works. It does. Okay, so. This is negative point zero, zero two. All right, so where's the max? Here's the max right there. So what we're gonna say on this thing is, we're gonna say that the, the max, the maximum number of people is about this number, 281.117 and 
I'm going to go ahead and put people there again. At T equals 8.132 hours after 8 a.m. Okay, so that's the homework. I'm sorry that took so long, but I want to help you work on your calculator stuff. Have a great day and I will see you later.